All right, in this video, we're going to talk about histogram back projection in OpenCV using Python. So we'll start off by saying what it is, why do we need it, how does it work, and jump straight into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we'll see how we could get this image here on the left to this image here on the right. Okay, so what is histogram back projection? It uses a histogram of a region to identify parts of the image with similar histogram distribution. So the idea is you might take a little region here of the car and then you try to find all the other regions that have the similar histogram. Okay, so to get this region, we're allowed to find this whole region, which is the blue area of the car. Okay, so why do we need it? It could be good for things like object tracking or image segmentation. So in this instance here, we're doing sort of a image segmentation, trying to get segment the car out of this image. So how does the uh, uh, method work? Uh, the way it works is first you compute the histogram of the region and you normalize. Then you calculate the histogram of the main image. And then after that, you find the probability of each pixel in the image matching the region by comparing the histogram. So this here is the result of the histogram back projection. And the colors that you see here, it shows you the probability of the pixel matching the region. Okay, so let's jump right into a coding example. Okay, so as usual, let's go ahead and import some of our modules that we'll need. So import cv2 as cv, and then import matplotlib.py plot as plt, import my numpy as mp, and import os. Okay, so let's go ahead and make our function, we'll call it hist back project. And we'll have our main function if name equals main here. And we'll call our histogram back projection. So inside of here, we're going to, I'm missing an equal sign here. So inside of here, let's go ahead and read in our image. So we're going to start off by getting our path. So os.getcwd. And then we have image path here which will be os.path.join, and we'll pass in root, and it's in demo images, and then tessa.jpg. And then we're going to go ahead and read our image with the cv.read function, and we'll pass in our image path. Then lastly, let's get the um, RGB version of this, so cv.cvt color. And we'll pass in our image. Then our code is cv.color bgr to rgb. Okay, so now we have our color image. So we have our plt.figure and then plt. Dot, um, I'm gonna make some subplots here so we can see the different steps that we're gonna be doing. So we'll do a two, three, one. And plt. Dot, um, show, and we'll go ahead and pass in our image. And if I do plt.show, you can take a look. So it's going to take a second to plot. So this is the image we are working with. OK, so that's our plot. And then next up, let's take a look at the region that we want. So we're going to get part of the car region. So we're going to create this um, region Call image region, and the region that we'll get is going to be um, this predefined area that we got already. So 22, 2200, and to 2700, and then it's going to be um, 10,000 to 1500. Okay, so that will correspond to part of the image of the blue area. So if I plot this area, I have plt dot subplot 232. And then plt.umshow, and then here we're going to plot our region. Okay, so if we plot our region, we could take a look at the region that we're going to be using for our histogram back projection. Okay, so this is this blue region corresponding to about this area here. So it's all blue. And then now we have image region, HSV. So we want to get the HSV uh, values for the image. So we have cv.cvt color. 
and the image region, we'll pass in the image region, then we'll do CV, we're gonna convert it to the HSV channel. So color RGB to HSV, okay? So that's our HSV uh, color for the region. And then let's go ahead and get our histogram. So we'll call image region hist, and then we have cv.calc hist. So we're gonna pass in first our image region HSV as a list, and then the channels that we'll be getting, it's gonna be the first two. We're not using a mask, so it's none. And then the size will be 180 and 256. And then lastly, the range we can specify, which will be uh, 0 to 180 and then 0 to 256. Okay, so our, that's our image region histogram. And we'll use that for our back projection. Okay, so once we get that, uh, let's go ahead and normalize it. CV.normalize. And then we could pass in our image region hist here. And our destination will be image region hist. And for this alpha, we could set that to be zero and then 255. And then our norm type will do CV dot, uh, it's called norm min max. Okay, so that's our normalization method. And then from here, we're gonna just have our output of our um, back projection. So out is CV dot, the new function we're introducing now is calc back project. So here it takes the uh, input as a list. So input's gonna look a lot like the histogram. Um, so here we're gonna pass in image HSV. And then we have zero one for the channels. And then here we pass in our image histogram. So we're gonna say image region hist. And then next up is the ranges. So 0 to 180, and then 0 to 256. And then the scale will do 1. Okay, so here we have um, image HSV. Uh, let's see. So after we normalize, yeah, one more step that we'll need is to get the image HSV, so the way we do that is gonna be very similar to the step that we just did. So cv.cvt color, and we'll pass in our image. Then we have cv.color, bgr, or technically we already converted to RGB, so color RGB to HSV. Okay, so now we have the histogram of our image here, so image HSV. And then we have our out, which is our output. And to take a look at that, we could do our plt dot subplot here. And we're at two, three, three. And then we have plt dot um, show and then pass in my out. So here we should be able to see our output of our calculate back projection. So these will show the probability of this region here showing up in the original image. Okay, so that's what that is. And then let's go ahead and do some magic by using some kernel. So we're gonna use the ellipse kernel to kind of um, expand that region a little bit. So we're gonna call this um, ellipse kernel. And we're gonna do cv.get. So we're using some of our morphological operations here. So the function name is called get structuring element. And then we pass in cv.morph um, ellipse. And then the kernel size, because our image is pretty big, we're gonna go ahead and do a 15 by 15. Okay, so that will be our kernel. And then we'll apply the filter, 2D filter to this. So we'll pass an out, the D depth, negative one to default, the original parameters that it'll use, and then go ahead and destination will be out. Okay, so if I do plt.subplot here, this is gonna be two, three, four, and then plt.umshow, we could see our output now. Um, in this case, it's, yeah, it's gonna be our output since we're passing in the result into out. So we could see how, by convolving it with the ellipse kernel, how does the result change? So 
you can see this has expanded the area. So getting more of the car, which is what we want. Okay, so that's what that step does. And then now to actually extract it out, we're gonna do some, uh, we wanna create a mask, right? So uh, the first argument is the true false, which we won't need. And then we're gonna be calling the threshold function. Okay, so it's called cv.thresh, uh, cv.threshold. And we're gonna go ahead and pass in our matrix, our threshold value, let's start off with a 70, 255, and then zero. So let's go ahead and plt.subplot here, we have a two, three, five, and plt.umshow, and let's plot the mask to see how the mask looks like. So if I run this program, we should see, yeah, this is our mask which is what we're gonna use. And then next up, we want to apply the mask. So if I run this again, so the threshold will uh, make the values, if you, if you notice here, if I zoom in, you can see that um, some of these regions are colored, right? But now, now that I have applied the mask, the green has become yellow because now we're dealing with um, binary since uh, we're thresholding, okay? So finally, we could apply the mask and I'm just gonna call this mask uh, all channels. And because originally for our mask is one channel, we need to do cv.merge here to combine all three channels into um, a depth of three for the matrix. And then we could apply our segmentation. So we'll do a bitwise and here. So we'll and our original image with our mask that's been applied, that's been made for all three channels. And then we could finally see the result. So let's go ahead and put in the fifth plot, plt dot um, I'm show here. And we'll put in our image segmentation results. So this just see, let us see our final segmented results after we have applied the mask. Okay, so as the final results, if we were to take this image here and then end it, so we will get this final output here. Okay. All right. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.